Welcome to TPM's 3 Minute Thursdays. My name is Robbie Hoyler and today we're going to talk about how to manipulate imported files in SOLIDWORKS. When creating your designs in SOLIDWORKS, eventually you're going to run into some files that you didn't create such as files that you get from a vendor or another CAD platform. I still see a lot of people having difficulty with dealing with this content, so here are a couple of quick, high-level tips that I've found that will help you deal with the load times in your assemblies that include this kind of data. Steve-O did a great deep dive webinar on imported data called Cleaning Up the Debris that goes over most of the tools and techniques. If you do a lot of this in your day to day, you need to check that webinar out in addition to these quick tips to really get the full kit to deal with these more complicated problems. I am going to use this drive train and gearbox as an example for a short and simple look. Our design calls for a certain build of gearbox that is to be purchased. Rather than remodel or mess with the parts themselves, we will just download the gearbox from the vendor and reduce the file size from there. Most vendors place a step or IGES file type so that any customer using a 3D platform can access the data and turn the format into their own native environment. Usually these files have no intelligence associated with them, such as material properties, features, sketches, or anything really. If you have a part, it will have a few imported bodies, and if you have an assembly, you have no mates or anything tying the components in place. When you have a file like this, here's what I would do with it. Step 1. Open the file in SOLIDWORKS by dragging it into the program or by using Open. Let it rebuild the geometry and then check for geometry errors using Import Diagnostics. If it is a part like this wheel, you can run feature recognition if you intend to modify or change the design at all. This will create the features and sketches based on the geometry so you can modify them. Step 2 is to save it as a native SOLIDWORKS part file whether you modify the geometry or not, and then you're done. If it is an assembly file you are bringing in, there are a few techniques to look at. First, I would identify any parts you want to modify and repeat the steps above for every part and complete those design modifications for the files before proceeding. For this example, the entire gearbox is going into our design as is because we are simply purchasing this unit and we need the mounting hole locations and the part to exist in the assembly for clearance detection and other design parameters. I'm going to load the step file in, which is the assembly including all parts. I will save this entire assembly as a part file to reduce the file size so that none of the components decide to move around on me. As a part file, I can drop this into my assembly and not worry about it affecting my load time. Sometimes it makes sense to take a step file assembly and remove extra parts you don't need or to even use the combine command and turn it into one solid body. Another thing we need to keep track of is the weight. Since we know the weight of the assembly but we don't have any material data, we can drive the weight of the assembly for design checking later. Here we override the mass properties to change the weight to the weight we had on the spec sheet. So these are the most basic steps to handle .step and .igest format files in your assemblies. Never try to drop a file like this into your assembly and use it as is because it will drastically reduce the speed of your assembly. For more details on really large step files, check out that Importing Data, Cleaning Up the Debris webinar on the TPM Solutions YouTube channel. Thanks for watching TPM's 3 Minute Thursdays.